lose yourself in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club. Now, Steve Nicholl won five football uh, league titles, first uh, division titles, three FA Cup winners' medals, the 1984 European Cup during 14 years with Liverpool. Not bad for a part-time player with Air United and an out-of-work building labourer. He joins us now to chat about his autobiography. Five league titles and a packet of crisps. Good morning, Mr Nicholl. You're very welcome. Thank you for Pleasure having me. Pleasure to meet you. Um, they, you have to explain the title. Well, obviously, the five league titles are, is self-explanatory. The packets of crisps. The, the packets of crisps... Uh, I wanted the book to be to be both serious and funny, and there's a lot of stories that that went on at Liverpool, uh, and one of the the reason that the packets of crisps was I once ate 14 bags of crisps in one sitting. And the only reason it was 14 is because I'd run out. <laughs> this is back in the day, of course, where where the the the. The footballer's diet was egg and chips and and a, few, and a few pints, sometimes before the match, not alone after. Well, listen, we got on we got on the bus after the game and Ronnie Moran had a big box. Who's pine chips? Who's fish and chips? So sports nutrition, sports science, all of that stuff, that well, I hadn't even been heard of in your day. No, I mean, it was basically common sense. Um, not that eating fish and chips after a game's common sense, but, you know, at the end of the day, it was about if you did that and if I did that, I like to be in, I like to buy your crisps. It's about working hard and getting rid of that. You know, you, you, you're burning it off, you're training every day. So, you know, we could get away with, with mm. eating and drinking stuff that today probably wouldn't happen and wouldn't be allowed. Now, you played for, I mean, Air United is not exactly uh, among the, the stellar no. names in, in, in Scotland, and I'm sure it probably wasn't back then either. So when, when, when you got the call that Liverpool were coming in for you, w was this like your dreams come true, Christmas, the lottery, all roll into one? Do you know, I'm, a, I'm kind of a very matter-of-fact person. And, and, and actually, you know, the manager turned to me and said, sit down, and he basically said, we've sold you to Liverpool. And I said, right. And he went, is that it? Right. But, I mean, inside, I was excited. But just my demeanour has never been any different than, well, well what it is still today. But, I mean, this... No, hang on a second. I mean, this is... Liverpool are... People forget now that the, the run for 20 years that United were on, mm -hmm. Liverpool had a similar nearly 20-year run. Right. And you're halfway through this. So there were league champions every year they had already won was it three uh, European Cups or yeah. four at that stage? Well I was 19 and they actually were European champions uh, when I joined them so you're walking straight into a team that's at the very top and I'm coming from little old Air United and you're going oh yeah Grant thanks and you know it's funny sometimes you fall into places that just feel you feel at home and that's, that's how I felt when I walked through Big the door at Liverpool. Big, uh, strong Scottish contingent there as right. well now, Alan Hansen does a lovely foreword at the beginning mm. of the book uh, um uh, uh, where he, he talks about, he said, in all of his years in football, and it's a very bitchy business that he's never heard anybody say a bad word about you. Mm. He says you were both the best left back and right back uh, that ever played for Liverpool. And I imagine Phil Neal is probably not talking to him now as a result of that. <laughs> yeah. uh, you also were the football writer's uh, um, um, player, player of the yeah. year that year because you filled in for him at centre back. So That's you could true. play in a load of places. Yeah. But you were a bit naive and a bit young. Oh, my goodness. Uh, as it, you know, you said it, you come from Air United, uh, middle of nowhere. You talk about being green and wet behind the ears. And, and Alan Hansen, in particular, wound me up remorselessly. For years. You were the one who got picked on. And, and picked on's not the right word. You know, the but fact... But there's always a guy who's the butt of the jokes in the gang, and it was you. Yeah, but none of the jokes were ever meant to knock me down. They weren't, they weren't guided so towards that. So they sent you that. up rather than put you down, is Correct, that Correct, exactly, okay, right. yeah. But, I mean, and did you it, help it matters? me in. What, what it did was it sucked me into them. As you said, I'm joining the European champions, Kenny Dalglish on one side of me, Alan Hansen sitting on the other side of me in the dressing room, and they're sucking me into to the way. Was Sunus there at the time? Sunus was there as well. Yeah, I mean, I've met him now, and it's like 30 years since he's played, and he's still scary. So what was he like in his pomp? Do you know what? You talk about a peacock with the feathers coming out. That's, that was him every morning. That, that aura. And what a captain. I mean, my goodness, we, we went to Rome in 84. 40,000 Romans. Mm. He couldn't. He wanted to get over the fence and start getting and then say there, and we we were ready to join him. That's. I know people think that Roy Keane was mad, but they. I don't know if they <laughs> remember Graham Souness in his day. That'd be a good fight, that. Oh, I tell you, I, I, I tell you, what a midfield if the two of them were in it. Oh, you wouldn't want to play against them. No, would you? you wouldn't. Um, 
it is extraordinary. I mean, you've had an incredible career uh, and a career that any footballer could only dream of, let alone actually have. But I'm just talking before we came on, you know, all the league titles, European Cup winner, etc., etc. But it turns out that for you and for that group of players in Liverpool in, in the um, late 80s, that the, the defining moments in your career were two appalling tragedies. Yeah. Heysel, obviously, which people now tend to forget, and uh -huh. I suppose it pales by comparison with Hillsborough, but 40 people killed, 39 people killed, 600 people injured. Then, of course, there's Hillsborough. And uh, you, you talk about it in the book, about the, the devastating effect it had, not just on all the players, but it also it nearly killed Liverpool as a city. And yes. it, it, a lot of people would say that Liverpool hasn't been the same football club since either. It has not been the same football club since. You know, every single thing that that happened at Liverpool up until Hillsborough was geared to what happened on a Saturday at 3 o'clock. The only thing that mattered was Saturday at 3 o'clock. That completely changed after Hillsborough because, you know, rightly so, all the focus had to be on, on, the, on the bereaved, on the families and, and anybody else who had been traumatised by it. So, you know, it's no surprise that the team suffers. Uh, incredibly, we actually won the league the following season. I don't know how we did it, because uh, I know I was on autopilot. I was, I wasn't. You're focused. very candid in the book, Stevie. You, you maintained that you were never the same player again, and that you were never mm. the same man again. Correct. Well, what I did was I started drinking, and I started drinking when I shouldn't have. You know, previously, you know, we laugh and joke about the eating and the drinking, but we did it at the right time. That's why you can get away with it, and that's why it doesn't affect what happens on the field. But. You know, I had mates who owned pubs, um, owned establishments, and I, I started drinking when I shouldn't have been. Um, and I don't know why. I still, I still don't know why. But, but none of you got counselling. No. I mean, that would be mandatory now. It should have been, but then yes. too. But it was a different era. Yes. Um, I, it, the book is not all doom and gloom. I mean, you, no. you tell <laughs> you tell an awful lot of stories about yourself and against yourself, and it is, it, it's the 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 last hurrah of the great Liverpool. It was the last mm. of the, those great Liverpool teams. So there'll be a lot of people who are kind of hoping. Very quickly, one-off questions. Do you think Klopp is the answer? Do you think he'll get you back to the top? I think he's the closest we've had to the old-style guys like Paisley, mm. Dalgleish, Fagan. I think he's a, he's a throwback. OK. So he's got a chance. Uh, tonight, uh, three uh, um, UK teams. Uh, you've got Arsenal against Mönchengladbach. Or yep. no, Paris Saint-Germain. Probably they'll be lucky if they get a draw mm. there. The big one, of course, from a Scots point of view, would be uh, Celtic and Barcelona. <sighs> now, they've, they've, they've frightened Barcelona before, so you, you, will they do it tonight? Does lightning really strike twice in the same place? There's your answer. There you go. <laughs> Steve, uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. I could have talked to you for the rest of the morning. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be a few people outside who will probably um, um, want to talk to you before you get out here. We're uh, obviously heading into autumn, so what's nicer than getting a good and comfy with a, with a nice book? How would you like to win a €100 Euro book token and a gorgeous rug to wrap yourself up in while reading the book? Head over to our Facebook page for details right now. And, by the way, if you want to meet Steve in person, he will be signing copies of his book in Easton's uh, on O'Connell Street at 1pm today. Steve, a pleasure. Thank you very much pleasure, indeed. Man. Lose yourself in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club.